Hello, welcome to what I wish I had known when I was first diagnosed, a patient insight webinar from the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network. Participants are in listen only mode. Please submit your questions in the Q&A section on the menu on the bottom of your screen. There will be a question and answer session at the end of the program. We would like to thank our sponsors, Bristol Myers Squibb, the EMD Serono Pfizer Partnership, Fairgene, Genentech, Merck, and Eurogen for their support of the Patient Insight webinar series. My name is Morgan Stout and I'm the Outreach and Education Manager at Beacon. Being diagnosed with cancer can be a life-changing event and each patient has a different experience. Many patients wish they had somebody to say to them, this is everything I should know when they were diagnosed. Today I'm joined by Dr. Josh Meeks, Dr. Alicia Morgans, both from Northwestern Medicine and patient advocates Daryl Nakagawa and Ann Martin to talk about what they wish they had known when they were first diagnosed with bladder cancer. I'd like to quickly introduce our panel. Dr. Josh Meeks is an assistant professor of urology at the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine, as well as section chief of robotic surgery at the Jesse Brown VA Medical Center. He is alert a urologic surgeon with expertise in the diagnosis, treatment, and management of bladder cancer. Dr. Alicia Morgans is an associate professor of medicine in hematology and oncology at the Northwestern University Feinberg School of Medicine. Her primary focus is hematology and medical oncology with a special interest in genitourinary cancers. Ann Martin is a patient advocate who received treatment at Northwestern Medicine. She spent most of her early career on the East Coast teaching elementary school, and she's a recent transplant to Chicago to be close to her grandkids. Daryl Nakagawa is a longtime volunteer with Beacon. Daryl was originally destined for the operatic stage and has appeared at, with national and international stars in performances in Hawaii, Houston, and Cincinnati. Since his diagnosis in May of 2017, he's continued to live a very active life. Thank you so much for joining us, Dr. Meeks and Dr. Morgans and Daryl and Anne. I will go ahead and turn it over to the panel. Great, thank you so much, Morgan. Uh, as you heard, my name's Alicia Morgans. I'm a GU medical oncologist. I really only see patients who have bladder cancer and prostate cancer, a couple other cancers as well, but that's the, the majority. And I have to say on behalf of Dr. Meeks and myself, we are so thrilled to have the opportunity to really talk with our patients um, and with you about all of the things that they wish they had heard and had known before. Um, why don't we do a quick, maybe two minutes each for, uh, for Ms. Martin, for Anne, and for Mr. Nakagawa, Daryl, to really give a brief summary of kind of where you stand, your brief journey, and we'll get into the details later, but maybe one to two minutes on that. Let's start with, with Anne. Um, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, one to two minutes? Sure, sure. I uh, was diagnosed, well, actually, I was diagnosed with the bladder cancer in March of 2014. Um, but it wasn't because I had any symptoms of bladder cancer. I was going for a prolapse surgery, um, a bladder prolapse surgery, and they were doing the testing and I went home one night and found that I had really bad pains. And the doctor said, come in. She said, because I think it will do a CAT scan, it's probably stones. And I went in and had the test. By the time I got home, she was calling me and telling me to go meet up with Dr. Meeks. It was a Friday afternoon and he was waiting for me and it was cancer. But I've been doing great since then. It's over six years and I'm just living life, my normal life and happy about it. Wonderful. And we'll, we will ask you more questions about how you got to today because I know it's been, um, it's been quite a journey and you are, are, you are one tough grandma. So, uh, <laughs> uh, so we will get to that in a minute. So Daryl, can you tell us in one to two minutes you know, what was your basic journey? And we'll dig into the details as we continue through the webinar. And Daryl, you are, you're just muted. So, perfect. Oops. Um, hi, I'm Daryl Nakagawa. Um, I'm a three and a half year um, RCIC um, survivor, um, thriving. And um, my journey began um, actually as a result of my physical. Um, so the doctor noticed that I had microhematuria. 
Um, and then it was time to go look or to find a urologist to, to probe. Um, I'd also had seen um, elevated PSA levels um, for about two years before that. So we had been somewhat monitoring that um, and uh, um, kind of looked, looked at the, the availability of doctors at Northwestern and um, ended up with um, Dr. Kozlowski and then due to his retirement switched over to Dr. Meeks and just jazz that I'm with um, the, one of the best institutions in my humble opinion um, here in Chicago. Well, that's very, very kind of you to say, Daryl. I, I have to agree with you, but clearly I'm biased. And you are with Dr. Meeks, who is the absolute best from, from my perspective. Yes. Uh, so I don't think anyone, at least on this webinar, will, will argue with that. And, and, uh, and with that intro, um, the wonderful Dr. Meeks is here. Do you want to ask the first question, Josh? Yeah, I, I think thanks, Alicia. And again, thanks, Anne and Daryl, for, for being with us today. I, I can't tell you how helpful this is for all of our patients as we sit in front of them and, and have discussions about their diagnosis and, and, and they go through such a journey. It all kind of begins at one place. And I, I kind of wanted to get your thoughts on that. If you can think back to that initial time when, when we had that discussion, you know, you, you're, you're both, you know, elected to, to undergo surgery down the road. Tell me again about how that was like for you. What kind of thoughts were going through your mind when we first had that discussion? You know, what was your first thought? And then kind of how did that evolve? And, and, and just start us down that road. I mean, who, Daryl, do you want to sort of start and then we'll go to Ann? Sure, sure. Um, so I kind of accidentally found out that I had cancer before the doctor ever communicated that. And, and again, I was with Dr. K. Um, because I happened to be on a study for um, another liver thing. And um, the, the research analyst um, kind of let, let the cat out of the bag um, before I ever saw any of the results from the pathology. Um, from the initial consultation, I had an MRI, then a CT scan, and they already diagnosed it there. Um, and then had staging terp, um, and then began um, chemotherapy. Um, so I was diagnosed with muscle invasive um, urothelial carcinoma with carcinoma in situ and squamous cell differentiation. And I you know, had no clue what any of that meant. So having the ability to, to understand you know, what I was facing and have a logical path of treatment um, and survival um, was kind of key. And, and can I ask you, I, again, you and I weren't, weren't together at that, at that point. Um, how did we do as far as, I mean, that, that's a pretty heavy amount of information. Um, I mean, it, it sort of hits words to us as providers I'm not sure it's possible, quite honestly, to explain that. But and, and you seem like you've 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 did a lot of research into that. How much? Because again, we have a pretty bright group of folks that are and that are really know a lot about their cancer. By the time they they get far into it, did we do a? How did we do as far as explaining that? And do you wish you would have known more? Did that did that matter? I mean, what did you take from that? And and how long? How did you figure all that out? Um. Well. Unfortunately, I also consulted Dr. Google. And, um, you know, I got the pathology reports before I ever got to um, talk with um, my doctor or Dr. K at the time. Um, and communication at this point is really critical to really understand. And I think um, I could have had a lot more conversation to really help me um, understand what some of the challenges might be mm -hmm. and what um, the journey was. So I, I want to, we'll come back. There's more we can unpack from that. So Anne, you, you and I had this discussion together. Um, tell me again how, about that and the information that you got and, you know, how did you guys process it and well, I had about 
an hour to process the fact that I had cancer before I met you. When Dr. Lewicki called me and she said, are you still at the hospital? I was like, no, I was in Costco. And I'll never forget, she said, uh, well, I really need you to see my colleague now. And I was like, now? And she's like, yes, he's waiting for you. It was a Friday afternoon. I went home, grabbed my husband. We went down to see you. So I really didn't have that much time to think about it. And I was just, I mean, I think you handled it really well because I probably was in shock a bit. But you told me exactly what was happening, how you wanted me first thing Monday morning to do the scraping. And um, you explained it very well with your little diagrams. And um, I, I was just like taking it from there. And once I had the scrapings and then you explained to us, you know, my choices, I just felt, well, I want to get rid of the cancer. I don't care, you know, if I go through the chemo and I'm still going to have to have the bladder replacement and the bladder, I didn't want to go through the chemo first. So that's how I got to the point with you. You know, I just put all my trust in you and I, you know, I'm glad I did. And uh, I was happy with everything. I mean, I did end up with chemo three years later, but that's okay. You know, that doesn't bother me at all. Um, it was a tough time, but I got through that as well with Dr. Morgan's. <laughs> Right. So to go back to Daryl, you know, you received chemotherapy before surgery. Um, right. At the time, uh, you know, I'll admit that, you know, that's become the standard of care. It wasn't that it wasn't the standard of care at the time, but honestly, it wasn't as well accepted. Um, so how was that decision made? How did you elect to make that? You know, what kind of, what, what were you thinking about as far as weighing the, the, the benefits of that? I would say that, you know, this was provided as kind of the best, it was, it was you know, positioned as the best treatment. Mm -hmm. um, and again, this was three and a half years ago. Um, and I had kind of had some lighter forms of chemotherapy um, before then. Um, so it was like, okay, if, if we think that would be the best course, let's go for it. Can I ask as far as, you know, at this point, you know, you're, you're looking at this potential long course of treatment, some form of surgery, likely some form of chemotherapy involved. What do you think played the biggest influence on you? Was it, was it us as providers? Was it was it Beacon? Um, was it your family? What, what was sort of playing a role in, you know, everyone goes through this, usually a dark period where you're, you're just, you're, you're facing probably for the first time your own potential and more, your more, own mortality. And then you two are incredibly resilient as far as people that, I, that I've known and trajectory just moving up so high. So t tell me about how you got there, because if I could bottle that, I would love to figure out how to provide that for everybody. So, so maybe you could each kind of talk about that. Well, I, I really think you, Dr. Meeks, did a really great job of getting me through this step by step. I know I was, a, the word cancer to me was like, you know, like a bad word. It really was. And when I heard it, it was, well, I just wanted gone. And when you gave me my choices, as far as you could go through the chemo, you know, there's no guarantee that it'll come back. When we made the decision as a family, because my husband and my daughters were like, you know, all with me, we decided this was the best way to go. And I really wanted the surgery. And I just felt that was the, that was what was going to get me back to a normal, a more normal life, what the kind of life that I wanted to keep on going with. And that's why I chose to that. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that I didn't, I mean, I've heard things about chemo, before this, but it wasn't that I didn't, I was totally against the chemo. I was just totally wanting the cancer gone. Mm -hmm. And if surgery was the way to go and the old bladder was the way to go, it all sounded very good to me. I did, you know, I did some research basically on the Northwestern site. Uh, at the time, I didn't even know about Beacon. And it just sounded like the right thing to do. And as you know, Dr. Meeks, I was like just, 
I couldn't wait to get the surgery done. Yep. And I was really happy that I did it. I still am. I don't regret anything. I don't regret the fact that, you know, three years later, the cancer did come back and I did end up with chemo and more surgery because to this day, I feel like my new normal is fine. My new normal is great. I'm doing exactly what I wanted to do and would have been doing with or without this uh, health situation. So I, I, don't know, I guess the biggest thing is, you know, staying positive. I just hoped all along that it'll all work out. And it did, I was lucky. And, you know, and I was determined.